friends welcome back to Max Electronics in today's video we have a, a box with a light inside from our new sponsors it's actually very exciting so we will be reviewing the light we'll have a look what's inside the quality and compared to some lights that uh, I have reviewed previously so this came from shed lighting our new sponsor uh, it is a moving head so that's very exciting let's open it up and have a look what's inside it just arrived today so we will check out what's in the box it is actually quite affordable lighting so we'll see how good the quality is all right so we've got another box in there and I can see the light already if we can get it out of that All right, so first thing comes the bracket. That's always good. Seems pretty strong. We have the power con to power plug, Australian style. Of course, for your country, it'll be a different type of plug. We have a DMX cable, just a standard jumper cable. And we've got to light itself, so let's try getting it out. And we have a manual down the bottom as well. So we'll check that out in a second. Okay, so let's look at the light. It is um, got some weight to it. there it is it is a hundred watt moving head looks nice seems to be easily rotatable so it's also got um, a ordered one with LED ring it doesn't look like it's got an LED ring though we'll have a look at that in a minute even it says here it does have an LED ring on the manual so we've got the safety precautions on the first page. Um, we've got the modes in a settings menu. We've got manual control and we've got advanced menu with a password. And at the back we've got all the channels. So let me just show you what it is. So we've got channel one is dimming, total dimming. Channel two is effect, uh, LED loop effect. Not sure what that is. Channel three is dimming spot dimming channel 4 is strobe 5 is pan 6 is tilt 7 pan tilt speed uh, I wonder how fast it is actually so it is an LED and a spot apparently uh, it says it on the side here channel 9 is a gobo 1 which is a dynamic gobo, gobo select gobo clockwise rotation anti-clockwise and shake Channel 10 is a gobo 2, so it's got two gobo wheels. Steady gobo, clockwise, anti-clockwise, and shake. Channel 11, gobo 2 rotation, so we've got one static gobo and one rotating gobo. Uh, channel 12 is prism. Uh, 13 is focus, so it does have focus, that's good. Channel 14 is pan fine, 15 is tilt fine, and 16 reset. All right, so. Uh, before we plug it in, let's just have a quick word from the sponsors of this video, which is Shed Lighting, that provide this beautiful lighting here. This video is sponsored by Shed Lighting. Shed Lighting is one of the fastest growing stage lighting companies taking a lead in manufacturing of high quality lighting fixtures for stage, concert and club. With massive range of products available, you can easily build your dream show within the budget. Shed Lighting uses high-end LEDs and optics to deliver vivid and bright colors to your stage. With 3D full color animation lasers, you can build a hydro screen and impress your audience with amazing holographic displays. With very affordable prices and fast delivery times worldwide, you can build your stage in just a blink of an eye. Click on the link below to check the range of amazing products Shed Lighting has to offer. Light your way in colors with Shed Lighting. Quality lighting designed just for you. 
Thank you, Shed Lighting. So here it is. Um, now let's have a quick overview first. So we've got uh, a moving head itself, which is uh, quite a small size. I've expected a massive light. It looks like it's got, well, so we've got, uh, that's more than five, is it? So we've got 180, 360. Oh yeah, so 570. So we've got 570 degrees, we've got full tilt. Now let's have a look at the front here. So what do we have? We have the... Um, display itself with a control. DMX LED and error LED. I assume that's an LCD. Uh, down the bottom we have... Well, we do have two handles. Down the bottom we have the mounting for the... When you hang it upside down. And now let's have a look at the back here. So we've got a DMX in, DMX out, power, fuse. We've got the power con in, uh, power con, yeah, and power con out for looping the other lights. So the light is apparently 100 watt plus 24 RGB. Not sure what that means. 16 channels. Beam angle 16 degrees. I'm just reading it off here. Uh, of that sticker right here. So I think it's time to turn it on and see what it does. I'm just trying to figure out the way so you can see the little screen. All right, let me readjust the cameras and uh, we'll have a look what it does. So we've got LED spot and it's loading. The light is homing. Well, I can see the LED inside. It's not on. It's just... Uh, Looks like a big LED. You can probably see it too. Let me tilt it. Yeah, you can just see the LED squares there. There's four of them. And it's loaded. So we've got saying channel one. Now let's see through the menu. It's in Chinese. Um, but let's see if we can change it. Uh, let me just use, I'll be back in a sec, I'm just going to use the Google Translate so I can change the settings uh, into English and then we can have a look at it properly. Okay, so I figured it out uh, using Google Translate. When the light comes to you, first you have to uh, click on the down button and that will scroll through menus and up is going backwards. So scrolling through them, it's not just four when you go further, it goes to language selector and then you press enter to change the language so I've changed it back to Chinese so this is how you receive the light first thing you press down 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 and then enter and now it's in English so this is a reset I'm not sure what this is let's see oh this is to flip the screen if you're using it upside down okay so we know that uh, the reset obviously the last one will reset the light uh, settings, let's go see what's there. So we've got a run mod DMX and um, DMX address. So we'll go auto and random and sound. Okay, so it is sound activated. So you can select the modes. Uh, then we've got the DMX address, which I will address soon. We've got standard 16 channels. I don't think you can change that, it's just there. We've got top LED temperature of 75, I wouldn't touch that. Sound regulator, that's a sensitivity. Invert pan off, so this is to invert the pan and tilt. Uh, pan tilt swap off. Pan tilt encoder on. Um, oh yeah, this is, so it must be sensing with the positioning. Uh, no DMX signal clear. Display on load defaults that would be a default setting all right this is back let's go again to manual dimmer so let's see if we can okay so that's bringing the led light as you can see on that camera oh that's bright that's 255 that is actually quite a bright light all right let's go to pan so you can manually actually change the settings if you don't have a 
DMX controller, I guess you can play manually. And that's tilt. Oh. Very smooth. Uh, pan tilt speed, color, so gobo effect gobo, so this is just a manual control of the light. Okay, let's go to system. DMX monitor, that shows the values the light's receiving, so that's good if you're trying to identify any problems with the light, and you can see which channel is receiving what. That's very handy. So if you're having a problem with the light that it's odd angle or something, you can see if there's a problem with the light or is it a DMX failure. Um, system, uh, system errors. So that will tell you the errors. There is no errors, of course, you wouldn't expect any. Tells you LED temperature. Uh, serial numbers, X, Y, dates. I guess this is a manufacturing date. Yeah, this is a manufacturing date. That's pretty cool. And we've got advanced. So it shows you asking for a password. I already had a look. The password is three up. Do not go in there if you don't know what you're doing. So one, uh, two, three, and three down. One, two, three, and enter. So this is a sensor monitor, which shows the values of the sensor. And then there is a reset calibration, which we're not going to touch, and zero point uh, correction, which you can adjust. So this one, actually, you can calibrate the value. So if your light, say, slightly tilted, uh, and it shows that it's in the middle, but it's not, this way you can adjust here and correct that light. No, I'll correct the position, or correct if the color it says it's pure red, but it's slightly off and it got leak, leaking green, you can actually change that to um, in this menu. So I'm going to get out of here. So I think it is time to hook it up to DMX. So I'm going to go into Freestyler uh, and set up this light, and then we can check out what it looks like. So I have spent uh, literally about two days creating all the files uh, for um, Freestyler, uh, creating a fixture. I've done a big list, as you can see right here, of all the stuff, because there's a lot more than I thought. So all this is just on one channel, believe it or not. Uh, then uh, done it all. So let's have a look at the screen. I've created the file. I've also, you can download the files below if you are wanting to use, buy that light and add it to your uh, Freestyler. Uh, the files are ready. The images are all there. So let's have a look what it looks like. I've done I reckon quite a good job. So we'll open all the parameters and here we see it. So we've got, this is a control for LED ring because it does lots of interesting stuff. So it moves really fast. Let's see, I'll just move this really fast around. It is really fast and very responsive as you can see. Everything is shaking because it's very fast, very responsive as you can see. So let's have a look at the LED ring. So I'm going to close the shutter and turn it towards the camera. So LED ring. So off is off, obviously. Uh, then I've added it as a second color wheel, so you can just go red. Um, so if we go off, the LED ring is off. Uh, red, obviously it's red, green, blue, everything is there, yellow, cyan, magenta, and white. Uh, if you want the effects, you can go here, and that's your slow, medium, fast, and they repeat all slow, medium, fast. So you got green, we'll go for fast ones, uh, blue, uh, yellow, and so on and so on. Then we've got the effects like those ones. Then we've got effects like this, just changes color. Uh, then you got the background, so this is the blue in red, I've called it. Uh, this is the red and green. So there's combinations of that. Then we have uh, the ones that fills up the screen. So chasing ones. And then we've got the fan one. So this is blue on red fan. So you can see it's just spinning. Uh, or green, uh, red on green fan. Uh, what else we got? Uh, blue on yellow. That's slow, fast. 
uh, the intensity of that can be controlled as well so I think it's the shutter yeah so the shutter controls the intensity so you can make it brighter or dimmer then what else RGB so that's pretty much the LED ring cover it took me forever to create all this Photoshop stuff so we'll go um, full the shirt is full so we'll turn that off let's have a look at the beam so I'm going to turn it towards the door so and let's turn just white light open the shutter it is very bright it's actually surprisingly bright believe it or not as you can see so uh, hopefully camera will pick it up properly the colors we've got um, red green blue yellow magenta vivid colors cyan lime and then we've got mix of colors so you can do it in doubles uh, all that's in the software then we've got a, I've added the color spin so you can go fast medium and uh, slow and they endless colors so there is no end it's just going to be turning over and over let's have a look at the gobo so we'll go to red and we'll go to first gobo wheel which is just a plane then we got this one let me just refocus it we've got a focus as well as you can see uh, let me see if I can turn it down that is very very bright maybe I should just add this that doesn't help does it um, there we go so that's not rotating gobos with that little sun, the mesh, this one, uh, rose, then uh, 45 degree mesh, and this one. Then we've got the rotating gobo, so we'll go for this one and let me just refocus it. So we've got this one, this one, this one, that that which is a pretty cool one and that and you can work there use them in combination so for example I can go this one and I'll add the rose over the top and just find the good focal point there we go so we've got mixture now or add this one or we can do the mesh and say this one or that over this that works too and they can rotate as well so I've added the buttons here for you can just rotate it to a certain angle so you can press that and as you can see it's 45 degrees 90 degrees 135 or you can go 315 degrees or you can rotate them counterclockwise and clockwise so we'll go slow counterclockwise um, oh, it's clockwise and then counterclockwise and fast medium so I've added all that for you that's the gobos then you can rotate the gobos which is I've added two here it's a gobo one spin so you can add again counterclockwise so you can adjust the speed you like and you can add the second one as well so we'll go this one opposite direction also you have the prism so let's put something cool on let's go for this one mixed with this one and let's add prism so I've added buttons here there's also that's a focus here and you've got uh, the prism manual adjustment which we're not going to use anyway we're going to add uh, let's say um, prism let's go for just enabling which is this button here and that enables the prism let me just make this a bit wider and then we can rotate the prism as well so let's go for um, slow and it's just slowly rotating uh, very slowly go medium and fast and of course we can add color to that so let's go medium and let's rotate the color medium as well so the possibilities are endless and of course we can add the automation and click on So that's it here. So now that we know how the light works and all the functions, and there's a lot of functions. I can't believe they packed so many in one channel, especially with LED ring. Now let's have a look what's inside. And then before we finish this video, so it is a quite vivid and bright light. I'm very happy with it.
quite impressed to be honest for such a small size that like, compared to my hand it is very bright and vivid and fast so very accurate too so let's um, open it up and have a look what it's like inside can we change the gobos a good question because maybe you can change the gobos and after that we'll uh, uh, get some smoke going and maybe see what it looks like with the smoke I have removed the screws from the top cover I'm not sure if it's top or the bottom because there's two of them as you can see so let's have a look what's inside nice so we can see the um, gobo wheel right here with all the gobos that's the ones that don't change they just rotate well selectable gobos we've got the color wheel right behind it as you can see again with all the pretty colors it's diacrylic mirrors and they endless so they do have just like a professional one that we saw uh, they um, all of them have the whole sensors with a magnet here is a magnet right here at the top and I'm pretty sure color wheel is gonna have one somewhere as well wonder where is it oh there it is it's it's inside there it's in the center you just can see those two and that's uh, motor and motor two motors inside of each other we've got our focus system here which is a bit different it's it's again it's got the whole sensor so it knows the positioning uh, the only thing that I can't see the 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 other ones uh, we saw was just moving you could move it by the finger this one no it's a screw so you need to keep turning it to adjust it backwards and forwards we've got a prism there so I think we have to get a nice big heat sink so I think we'll have to open the other side to get to the rotating gobos and see if we can get them out. So give me a sec, I'll remove the cover. Alright, so the screws are loose. Did I miss one? Oh no. There we go, that's the other side of it. We've got two beefy contacts going to the LED. And the gobos are unfortunately not replaceable. I mean, you could probably, well, it looks like they screwed in, so unless you remove the whole gobo, unscrew it with those screws here, and, um, yeah, and replace the whole part with the rotating, I don't know, maybe you can buy the whole gobo like that, usually it's just a disc that goes inside, and, um, I suppose you could cut that silicon out and remove the gobo and put your own one in. Yeah, so that's the prism engagement mechanism. You can not change the prism, prism either. You can buy, however, those different things with a different prism uh, diffraction. So this one's got how many grains? One, two, three, four, five, six, one. But you can buy like eight and more. You can buy three. So the prisms are available, it's just a whole mechanism, hold that mechanism here. Alright, so this is the head, and you can see the nice lens in there for the LED. And the LED I think is visible if we we'll look right into it. There we go, we can just see the LEDs. So it must be 25 watt each square, okay. Now that we had a look here, we've got all the sensors, whole sensors. Um, uh, yeah, sheds, I know you're probably watching me since you're the sponsors. Maybe next time, don't glue your um, gobos in. Make a little spring, and uh, first you'll save on the glue. Make a little spring, this way the user can actually pop the spring out, just like other lighting, get the gobo away, and put their own gobo in, and then put the spring back in. Uh, it'll be more convenient for people to um, put their own gobos uh, and it's just you know maybe someone who wants to put like max electronics maybe I want to put max in there or something so that's a good idea to improve in the light just uh, make the gobos removable and swappable now but um, let's have a look what's in the sides here like how they running the wires so I'm gonna assemble the head back oh let's actually have a look at the LED ring so it doesn't look good diffusion here and it looks like it's just an addressable LED by the look of it there's three wires running to it and they are right here 
those three and they run where are they running oh they run right there we'll see it in a second so here comes the ring which is a perspex and yes it's just a standard addressable leds and that's the led ring and they connected in Sirius. and that would be the last one by the look of it yeah where is that connector? Oh, there I see. It's zip tied on the other side. There it is. Just a standard LED ring. All right, I'm going to assemble all this back together and we'll have a look at the sides and then the bottom base plate. All right, so uh, the sides are off and uh, that's something different. I haven't seen this sort of approach to the lights before. So as usual, we have all the electronics here on the side uh, to control it. So the drivers, so the pan motor is actually in here, right here. And the way they've done it, as you can see, the middle stays stationary and the motor with the counter tilts around it. That's very interesting. I haven't seen that before. With the tilt motor, it is right here on the side, just like the other one. And it's got double counters. So we've got the counters on here with the optical, two of them, uh, the positioning one. And then there's a magnet one right here as well. So you can tell when it's in this position. Very interesting. Very smooth as well. So that's how they're doing the high speeds. All right. So now that we've looked at that, uh, let's have a look what's inside here. Very easily serviceable, so if you ever need to do service or something like that, it's very easily accessible, put it that way. Uh, so four screws seems to be for everything. So if I want to open this side, it's four screws. If I want to take the top of this, it's four screws. And bottom is four, four screws. One side is four screws. Very easily accessible. All right, let's uh, put the sides back in and open the base and have a look what's in the base. The bottom parts are removed, so let's check it out. On the plug side, we have the two power cons and the DMX switch, the fuse, and uh, that's all there is on that side completely. Yeah. And that's it. So we've got uh, ground connected to both of them, and it is grounded. That's a good thing to see that it is safe. So it is definitely safe, it's grounded. Uh, then uh, fuse is in there. On the center part, we have the switch mode power supply, as you can see, and it's grounded as well. And that's the switch mode power supply output. And then on this side, we have the control board, which is running the DMX input and outputs the data to the board that is on the side of the light there through this cables. And that's the DMX. So that's all there is to it. Uh, it is metal, so it's solid. It does have plastic, so we do have like plastic handles, but they seem to be like a solid plastic. And it's this is all plastic, but it's a metal frame inside, so it is solid. Uh, it definitely has my tick of approval. I would use those lights. So the pros are: it is small, it is fast, it's very compatible. Um, it is competing with. Um, professional lighting that has sensors and you know endless color wheels and endless gobo wheels uh, that's up so it's very responsive it's got a lot of functions a lot of um, things you can do with it it is bright so that's all the pros um, very responsive like I said before nice prism nice gobos monitor as well like I said it's got a monitor we saw that before they can monitor the DMX values if you're getting an error or anything like that, you can operate the light from here, adding the DMX values with the buttons. Uh, that's a big plus as well. Metal frame, nice, nice smooth moving. There's not much of jerking, so it's good. And the cons are not removable gobos, so it would be nice if the gobos would be removable. And the other downside is the two gobo wheels are too far apart, so they have different focal points. So if you're projecting one gobo from go from gobo wheel one, uh, it'll be on one focal point. Then you switch to another, you have to change the focal point. 
that's the downside of that. Uh, they should have put a, you know how there is a gobble wheel and a color wheel next to each other? They should have done that with gobos and left the color wheel separately further away because you don't really need to focus on the color. So that's what they should have done. So that would have been probably better. So let's put this light back together and uh, we'll go and play with some smoke machine. That's it for this video. I'm very pleased overall with this light. It's a very good light. If you want to grab one yourself, there's a link down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can also support us on Patreon if you'd like to. My name is Max. I will see you next time. Bye.